If you walked into a Cadillac dealership back in 1989, you would have found seven different models to choose from, four of which were full-size sedans. However, three of them were essentially the same thing. You had the Sedan DeVille, the Fleetwood, and the 60 Special. Our spotlight today is on this 1989 Cadillac DeVille with some Fleetwood upgrades. Now we could argue for a while about exactly what this car has to offer. The VIN says that it's a DeVille, however the exterior design look of it says that this is a Fleetwood. Now when you look at the VIN, it will tell you whether or not it is a DeVille or a Fleetwood. I had to do quite a bit of research to get this information exact from the CadillacForums.com website. But this is a DeVille with some upgrades. But what made a Fleetwood versus a DeVille? Well, honestly, not a whole lot. Both were using GM's C-body front-wheel drive full-size sedan platform. The major difference that I could tell with a Fleetwood were the covers on the rear wheels. This car has it, it's also got the Fleetwood badging, so you can see why you might think it's a Fleetwood. A couple of the other options on this, the upgrades, whatever you want to call it, we do have the gold emblem badges. And it's one of the other reasons why I was a little confused because on the back, it's got the gold badge for the 4.9 liter V8. This has a 4.5 liter V8. But you've got the gold badges, you've got the gold keys, you've got the Landau roof on the back, and I like it because it actually covers some of the rear window. It's a cool little design. There were so many options and different ways you could configure a Cadillac DeVille back in the 80s. So you really get a unique vehicle no matter what. Now again, this has been upgraded a little bit from what we can tell. Even the Continental tire on the back probably wasn't factory, but it gives this car a really good look. I mean, I love driving these classic cars. The second you open the door, you're reminded why these cars command quite a bit more than what you would get for something quite a bit newer because there is something very special about this. Now, if this is the first time that you've looked at a old Cadillac like this or any old American vehicle, you get two sets of keys. One, the round one opens up the doors and the square one starts the car. Now, this was the way that I had my first car, my 83 Ford LTD Crown Victoria. So it really is nice to have that same experience here quite a while later. Now, as I mentioned, this is using a 4.5 liter V8 engine. It's Cadillac's high technology engine. It was in production for quite a while, and we'll talk about it at the end. There are some things to look out for if you're looking at this vehicle, but it had 155 horsepower and 245 pound-feet of torque. So horsepower was pretty low. If you went for the 91 model and got the 4.9, you'd be looking at 200 horsepower. But considering that's kind of what was going on in the 80s, it's more than adequate. Plus it's a V8, you've got all that torque. It is front wheel drive though. So some people might be put off by that if you're looking for a full on luxury experience, but that's the way the industry was going for American luxury manufacturers back in the 80s and into the 90s. The Lincoln Continental became a front wheel drive vehicle as well, and this would have competed directly with it. The original MSRP in the US for a DeVille was $25,760. If you went for the Fleetwood, it would have been $30,840 US, so a $5,080 difference. And honestly, if you were just really getting the badging and the covers on the rear wheels, it's not really worth it. You would have gotten leather as well, as this is one of the few vehicles I've seen that has the cloth interior, but I have been told that it was possible to get a Fleetwood with the cloth seats, which is why it's so important when you're looking for a car like this, that you find the one that you really want. I mean, this is white paint on a blue interior. Love the blue, seats are super comfortable. And honestly, if I was buying a car like this, I would go for the cloth as well. Leather is nice and everything, but it'll eventually crack. And unless you're taking good care of it from the day you bought it, it will start to deteriorate. Plus, in the hot sun like it is today, where it feels already like 42 degrees Celsius, you really don't want to be sitting on leather. So the cloth seats are quite nice to have. So maybe you're not totally familiar with GMs from the era give you a little bit of history. Cadillac, obviously, as their flagship luxury brand, was also the test bench for new technology. So a car like this DeVille had tons of new tech that you couldn't get on other vehicles because GM wanted to test it out to see if it worked. For example, Twilight Sentinel is a feature on this car. It is automatic headlights, a feature in 1989 that we're only starting to see even on the base model cars, finally, 2020. So this is a technology that was around a long time for General Motors and they tested it out with a vehicle like this. You can change the sensitivity of it so that the headlights come on when it gets dark out or if you want them to come on a little bit earlier, you can adjust that from there. A vehicle like this also had optional ABS. 
There are other options like a remote key fob and their new KeyPass 2 anti-theft key system, which probably is very rare on these types of vehicles. You also could have had a universal garage door opener, traction control, a heated windshield, a driver airbag, speed sensitive steering, and a speed sensitive suspension system, an electrochromic in and outside mirror system. This one's got it on the inside for sure. So as you're driving at night, it'll reduce the brightness of any headlights coming out behind you automatically. Whereas again, something that we take for granted today was very cool when it was new. There are also a couple other things that you really don't see anymore. We have lamp monitors on the front hood and the back headliner of this vehicle. It tells you whether or not the brake lights are working, the headlights, the turn signals are working on the vehicle. Now on a day like today, when it's too hot and sunny, I can't see if the front ones are working, but the back ones work for sure. This was before you had a digital readout to tell you if those things were working or not. A couple other features that you would have gotten on this, as we see here, we have power mirror which is a nice thing to have on a vehicle that's this big, but you also would have had an AM FM cassette player. This one's been upgraded to the Delco Bose audio system, so the sound system on this is better, and you could have even had a CD player on this vehicle. Now, this is a six passenger car, so you can fit three people in the back and three people in the front, which means you have a column shifter putting all the other gadgets that you need on the left lever, including cruise control, your high beams, turn signals, and windshield wipers. So there's a lot going on on the left. We still see that today on some new vehicles like we get from Chrysler or Jeep. But it is a really cool interior here, very futuristic for the time. You've got the wood trim everywhere, cloth seats, blue all over the place, but I really do like it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in this, we're gonna take it for a road test. I'm gonna tell you everything about this Cadillac DeVille and what you need to know if you're in the market for it. Plus, we'll talk a little bit about the final engine specifically designed for a Cadillac, because after the end of the high technology engines here, they were shared between Buicks and GM products across the board. So let's jump in now, we'll go over everything else you need to know about this 1989 Cadillac DeVille. And I do apologize for my profuse sweating. It is 38 degrees outside according to the electronic climate control system on this car. But the problem is there's no air conditioning. I can turn on the auto fan and actually I'm gonna put it back. Yeah, I'll put it to auto because it does have auto climate control, but the air conditioning's not working on it. And that's a problem when it comes to filming these old cars. You know, you can't really guarantee that the air conditioning is going to work. And that's one of the first things anybody asks whenever somebody buys a used car is, does the AC work? Because we all know that it never does. So it's uh, quite toasty today, 38 degrees. I am sweating and I still have to film the rest of this car. So air conditioning would have been nice, but honestly, what do you expect for a 31 year old car? Now let's talk about a little bit on the inside here because there is so much to go over. I don't want to miss anything. This is a pretty cool interior, especially for an 89. Everything is essentially digitized. We've got a digital speedometer. We have a trip computer and the digital readout for the miles. This we're at 151,000 kilometers and there's even an easy button to switch between English and metric. You can also change the trip, set that. We have the controls on the left side for the Twilight Sentinel automatic headlight system plus the lights. You pull it out to turn them on, push them in to turn it off. You have the information center below that. It's kind of hard for me to see it based on my seating position, but that's where you would see things like, you know, if your brakes need to be done, service engine, anything like that will come up on either side of the information center. And for example, when I was boosting the car because the battery was dead, the security light kept coming on and you also turn on the car when there's no air conditioning and it'll tell you that you need to service the air conditioning. Climate controls are just above that to the right side of the driver's steering area here. It's not the most convenient to get to, but it does open up the space here in the center for that third passenger to sit in the middle. Now this does have the upgraded Delco Bose Gold Series radio in here. I'm not gonna play it because I don't want any copyright infringement to come up for any music that happens to play, but you have controls for treble, bass, front fade, and you've got your tape deck in there. And it actually sounds pretty good. If you're buying this car because you wanna cruise and enjoy on the weekends, but you still wanna be able to listen to terrestrial radio, this is the way to do it. And I am so, so happy that the original radio is in here because during my research, I was looking at these cars, trying to find some other classic DeVilles and Fleetwoods. They are pretty hard to find with the original equipment because a lot of people 
back when this car was a little new, maybe in the mid to late 90s, when you could pick it up certified pre-owned and you know, off lease kind of thing, people would swap out the radios. They'd put a different deck and especially into the 2000s and late 2000s, they'd put in CD players and MP3 players and remove the heritage of what this car had to offer. So the fact that it's all original is really cool for me. Underneath it, we've got a cigarette ashtray. It's very cool that it slides out and then the glove box with all the documentation for it. And one of the things I was gonna mention on the outside, I was able to get the digital version of the 93's owner's manual and about 47 pages were dedicated to the supplemental restraint system, the airbags on this, because there's no airbag on this one, but it was a new technology at the time and GM was really putting a lot of effort into saying you gotta wear your seatbelt, you gotta be safe when you're driving these cars. So they dedicated so much space to airbags and seatbelts to get people to understand how important it is to have your seatbelt on and to understand how the airbags work. Because I guess at that time when they were coming out with airbags, people thought, well, I don't need to wear my seatbelt because I have an airbag. It'll prevent me from dying if I hit something, but obviously that's not the case. You really need both. And it makes sense. This is a three point harness. It's a little tight on the bottom for me. I fit, it's comfortable, it fits no problem, but I'm kind of at the maximum of the lap belt portion. The shoulder belt can come up more, but just something to note, if you're a big guy like me, maybe take it out for a test drive first just to see if the belt will fit. But let's talk about this. This is a 4.5 liter high technology V8 engine. It's smooth, it's quiet too. And even though that this car is 30 years old and I don't know a whole lot about the history on it, it rides really good. Now we've driven a number of older cars, specifically S-classes. It's not an S-class in terms of comfort, but man, this thing is really nice on the road. You don't feel the bumps. It really feels like a boat. And that's what you'd be looking for at a car like this. That's why a lot of people used to call these luxury barges or a land yacht because that's really the way it feels. It does not have precision steering. And I imagine maybe if you fully loaded this thing up, had the speed sensitive suspension and steering on here, maybe it would feel a little sportier, but that was never the point of these old Cadillacs. They were meant to be cruisers and that's exactly what this thing does. <laughs> it's really a very unique experience and I do like it. I mean, I just love driving these classic cars despite the fact that there is no air conditioning and I am dying in here. It's just so nice to drive something like this. The smell of it too. Ah, oh, it just smells like an 80s, 30 year old car. And behind the wheel, it's really good. So if you're looking for a comfortable boat-like experience, this is the way to go. You're not buying it because you want power. You're also not buying it because you want a fuel efficient vehicle. It actually will tell you the instant fuel economy right now, we're at 99 liters per 100 kilometers, but the average, which was reset when I obviously jumped the car, says 15 liters per 100 kilometers. Now we're driving around town here, maybe it'll go down if you're driving on the highway, but still 15 ain't great. But what do you expect? It's a huge engine, it doesn't produce a ton of power. And you saw there, what right off the line, the pickup on it was pretty good. You're not gonna be setting any, any land speed records in this car, but you don't want to, you want to cruise. And my God, I'm liking it. I really am. And that's the great thing about this. I want to give a thanks to Excellence Auto here in Actonville for letting me feature this vehicle because it's actually loaned to them essentially on consignment. The owner of this wants to get it sold. They've given it to them to sell it. And I was able to get this car to be able to drive it and show it to you. So big thanks to Excellence Auto. But if you wanna buy it, this specific car, it's available. The information is in the description below. Take a look to see the link and everything else you want to know about it. Because if you're looking for a car like this, if you wanna have a number matching Fleetwood, this might not be the one to go for. But if you're not too worried about that, you want the look, you like the fact that it's got the Continental tire and you've got the design of the Fleetwood with the badging and everything and the gold, Cadillac badges and all that, then this is the way to go. It's been upgraded, OEM plus. Even if maybe the parts aren't exactly OEM, it still gives you the look of it. And honestly, that's all that matters. It's the person behind the wheel that cares. 
Now I also mentioned a lot about the optional features on here. Like I said, this is pretty well equipped, especially with the Twilight Sentinel option on here. That became standard, I believe, in 1991 or 1992. So the later models, you get the better engine, you have a slightly updated four-speed automatic transmission. It's essentially the same one as this, but just updated a little bit. And some of the other standard features were added to that for those model years that were optional for this sort of year. So, I mean, this is well equipped, especially uh, the fact that you got the cloth seats, but man, these are so comfortable. Not easy to clean, and I know, but if you're looking for something that is super comfortable, I still say go with the cloth seats. They really are nice. And the seating position is excellent. Power seats on here, power windows, power mirrors. Uh, there's no such thing as memory, but who cared about that? The idea is you got a big car. Okay, it's front wheel drive, but the type of people who were looking at this car new and probably the type of people who are looking at this car now just don't really care about that. They used to make it into a marketing play that it was a front wheel drive luxury car. It wasn't a negative because that's how you saw cars. You gotta make everything into a positive and I'm liking it. So here's a good example. We're gonna go around this corner here and you're gonna, like you can see maybe even on the, the camera, I've, I've tried to set up the GoPro here to be as normal as possible, but you can see that when I hit bumps, it just, it goes and you don't feel it. You, f you mean, you know you've gone over something, but it's so cushioned. And same thing with the engine here, picking up speed, it does a good job. <laughs> I'm liking it. I really, really like it. I think that it's got just enough of the futuristic design from the 80s. So, you know, you've got a nice layout here with the wood trim and either leather I think it is leather wrapped everything here everything is soft touch plus you got the the feel of fabric on your door cards and everything I mean it is well put together oh somebody needs to buy this car because I really want it look at that it's just it goes it, it's not quick but it's not slow either and it's so effortless that's one of the things i talk about when it comes to these luxury cars is it's not always about performance but it's about effortless power you want to be able to get up to speed without feeling like you have to get up to speed and that's what this car does yeah maybe on the highway you're going to be causing a little bit of a traffic jam but not much but like it's good it's really really good Wow, what a treat it is to be able to drive this car today. I'm so glad. This is what I live for. I love doing the new stuff, but man, this is my real passion, is driving something like this, because you never see these on the road, and when they do, they're always in good shape. But you want to own one, now you can. The first thing we always stress when buying a used car, even if I don't take my own advice, is to have the vehicle inspected by a trusted mechanic to check for any safety related problems or issues that might cost you in the near or future. It's a plus if the vehicle comes with a service history, and more often than not with an older Cadillac like this, you should be able to get it, as these DeVilles and Fleetwoods might have only one or two previous owners. The first Cadillac High Technology HT4100 V8 engine had some problems. Specifically, the intake manifold gasket would fail due to scrubbing the bimetal interface, but also it suffered from aluminium oil pump failures, cam bearing displacement, and weak aluminium block casting and bolts that could pull the aluminium threads from the block. Unfortunately for GM, the other two engines offered, GM's V864 and the 5.7 liter Oldsmobile diesel were problematic also. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the engine in the one you're looking at is bad, but it is important to know that it could be an issue if somebody hasn't swapped in something a little more reliable. The electronics are susceptible to problems too, just like any old car. The power windows on this specific DeVille were sluggish due to age, but other issues can present themselves with the new technology tested on vehicles like this. When a new vehicle is being used to test out new tech in its first iterations, it often leaves customers with non-functioning features. Try to test as many of the gadgets as possible when looking at one. Now, the ignition switch wires are also brittle and can break over time, giving you symptoms of a dead or dying battery or a failed starter motor when it's just the wiring that's to blame. Radio problems seem to be common with this 6th generation DeVille as well, as a number of posts on CadillacForums.com point to continued issue with these older radio units and speakers. The OEM security system and key fobs also seem to fail over time, 
and might be more of a headache to deal with if optioned with it from the factory. Like with any classic car, things will break. It's not a matter of if they do. Set aside a budget for regular maintenance and emergency repairs if you're planning on daily driving a 6th generation DeVille like this. While they're designed for long distance ultra comfort cruising, it's still a complicated 30 year old vehicle with cutting edge technology that was experimental for its time. Advice I heard often when I was younger when it came to GM vehicles came from my uncle Jack. He never bought a new Cadillac despite being able to afford one, but went with the Oldsmobile instead. The Caddies always got the latest features, but the Oldsmobiles benefited from those early test model Cadillacs working out all the flaws. That might be something to consider today if you're in the market for one of these classic GM sedans.